Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. Well, I thought at that time again, it's time for another equipment review. And this is the one that I've been waiting to do. This is probably my most prized possession in astrophotography. I did an unboxing video on it. I also did a brief review with this and the new mount that it was going on, the CEM26 by Optron. But now it's time for a full review. I've had a good amount of time to use it. I mean, I would have loved more, but between horrible weather, I'm not gonna go on about that in every video but also the problems I've been having with my CEM26. Hopefully you've caught some of my last videos talking about that, which this is the scope that I use it on, uh, that I use on it. You know, I haven't got out as much, but I have had enough experience to be able to give what I consider a, a fairly knowledgeable uh, review video. So hopefully this helps if you don't know much about Takahashi, or if you know a lot and you've been thinking about getting one, but you're on the fence, because we'll talk about the specs and all that, but we'll also, uh, answer that question is it worth it that's the million dollar question and it's a hard one to answer but we'll talk about that so just very briefly i wanted to show the scope as i use it okay so the first video was my unboxing you saw it out of the box this is out extended camera on it this is exactly how it is There's a couple other cables i took off so it didn't look so messy but this is exactly how i use this scope on my cm26 mount so um, again, just briefly, the, the specs on this FSQ85, it's 450 millimeters of focal length. It is f5.3, is uh, the speed of it, so right down the middle. Not too fast, not too slow, you can still do dim objects, all that. And it weighs about, I believe, 8.6 pounds. So again, not super light, not super heavy, but very usable. I think probably with everything on here, it's probably 11 and a half pounds at the most, maybe 12. So you're able to easily put this on any you know small mount and have lots of room to make sure that it tracks accurately. So that's what you want. You don't want to have to put uh, you know buy a bigger mount just to use a telescope like this because the telescope costs enough as it is. So to be able to use it with whatever mount you have now, that's a bonus. Um, basically, it is considered a fluorite ED quadruplet. So we've talked about that in the past. Quadruplet, there's triplet, quadru doublet, triplet, quadruplet. Quadruplet is even better for color correction. High quality lens in here. That's really what you're paying for. We talked about this before, but um, Takahashi is from Japan. They're known for hand hand polishing or whatever their, their lenses. So they're really high-end glass in these telescopes. And that's where the money comes from. Now, the build quality is very good. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's really that glass in here that makes the biggest difference. And that's why they're so expensive. But yeah, those are, that's basically an overview. It's, it's just the perfect to me uh, focal length and you know weight and all that. Um, they make a bigger version, the FSQ 106. Um, but for me, this was the perfect uh, focal length. Now, as I mentioned, it's 450 millimeters. Now, what I really loved about this telescope is that it came with free, I'm sure that's included in the price, this flattener, 1.01 time flattener. So usually, we've talked about this in some of my other videos, when you have a refractor, the edges are not going to be, well, it's not gonna be a flat field. So the edges have elongated stars and other aberrations. You need to put some sort of reducer on there or flattener um, to help sort of smooth that out and get a better flat field. But this, it already comes with it. It just screws right on. It comes in a separate box, but it, you just screw it right on. As you see here, it's not too big. And being a 1.01, it's nice because it doesn't change the focal length too much. Um, it doesn't it really doesn't affect anything. Even that, you know, the uh, f 5.3 doesn't really change much. It's just nice that it comes with basically a flattener that keeps everything the same. So you're buying it for the specs that you see, and that's the specs that you're using it with because that flattener. Um, and of course, you don't have to worry about elongated stars and all that stuff in the corner. So. That's why I love this, why I really like this scope. Um, and the fact that it came with that, it's just nice. It's one less thing to worry about. You, normally, I mean, you still a lot cheaper to buy a different brand plus a reducer, but it's just nice not to have to buy that. Now you do have the option to buy a reducer for it, or you can buy an extender, you have a 1.5 extender. So you either bring the focal length up to like 650, 675, I think 675. So it's a versatile scope too, with, with just changing it in some pieces, you can, you can, you know, make it wider or less, and uh, you can go slightly faster or slower, uh, depending what you need, but uh, it's a very versatile scope, and 450 is a great sort of middle point 
where you can go for all those um, big medium to big nebulae quite big galaxies this is definitely not a galaxy hunter this scope but you got a lot to work with and then as i said you can buy accessories to sort of alter that and, and make it more usable if that's what you want to do now i'm using it with the uh, zwo asi uh, 294 mc pro so that's my first astro dedicated camera that i bought and it's a perfect match for this telescope with that rectangular sensor uh, another thing to keep in mind with these telescopes as expensive as they are they still don't come with mounting rings uh, as opposed to like my explore scientific which did now a lot of the pictures when you google the scope you'll see come it shows with the takahashi mounting ring the problem is that mounting ring from takahashi which is extra only works on the takahashi mount and i don't even want to know what a takahashi mount costs i am not using one of those and probably 99 percent of people won't be so you will need to find another alternative. So I did a little bit of research and I was able to get these Prima Luce rings. I love Prima Luce, very good quality and worth the price. And then I have a couple bars here. I'll just lift it up so you can see. Bar on the bottom. So I got the two, ring, the two guide rings, the scope rings, the two bars, top and bottom. And then I also had to buy an extender here at the bottom just to sort of build it up a little bit more so that the focuser knob uh, was able to clear so i had to buy those pieces and then i just mounted my asi air on top with this little adapter for made by zwo on top to hold it but um yeah uh, basically not too expensive and now you got a nice um guide ring uh, scope rings that sort of match the scope and really high quality so i'm happy with that um it'd be nice if they threw that in but of course, it's Takahashi, so they don't. Uh, other than that, I got it, like as I mentioned, it's fully extended right now. It just comes with a regular cap. Uh, no bat knob mass built in or anything like that, unfortunately. This is just my dew heater. And one thing I want to mention as well that's nice with this flattener, you're able to screw your filters right into it. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, not having to use a filter drawer. Um, nothing wrong with filter drawers, but it's just nice. I like to have my, my filters screwed right in to the flattener. So a little bit more of a pain when you want to change them, but I don't change them all that much. I've been using the L Extreme with this particular scope. I have my, my other ones, my Triad Ultra I use with my Explore Scientific, but I definitely will be putting that in here in the summer and testing that with the scope and the camera and to see what kind of results I get with that. But so far, even with the L Extreme, I've been very happy. So that basically covers all the specs and sort of an overview of how I use it. Uh, the folks are here is a double knob. You can't see, I'll show you a picture. Um, and if we're talking about now and going into pros and cons, the cons, I'll go start with that. It's very small, I found. Uh, I mean, if you're being really picky, and I said this about my Explore Scientific, the focus knob maybe isn't the greatest. There's definitely nothing wrong with it. A lot of guys will change it, you know. I guess when you're spending money on a scope like this, you're going to customize and make it the best you can. Um, for me, it's really not worth it. Uh, I'm happy with it. And, uh, you know, I've been using it without an EAF, an automatic uh, focuser. Uh, even though I use one on my Explore Scientific, I will get one eventually. I should mention as well that if you do want one, you need to buy an adapter, of course, because it's Taha Takahashi. Nothing just works with it. So ZWO sells an adapter that you need to buy with the EAF. To make it work now i have the adapters like 30 ish dollars but i haven't bought a second eaf i will probably in the spring or summer but for now it's been fine to use it with a bat knob mask and that's really the only con honestly other than the price that i can think of now that con goes into the positives talking about the bat knob mask this scope holds scope um holds focus really well. It's funny, I bought that Explore Scientific, the carbon fiber, spent the extra money on that, thinking that, that that's why I was buying it, to hold focus. We talked about it in another video, but in fact, it's actually way worse. Um, it's not terrible, but it, it, do not buy the, the carbon fiber thinking that it's going to hold focus. Okay, It's an aesthetic thing, let's be honest. This holds focus much better. You do need to make the, uh, the odd adjustment, maybe every two, three hours. Maybe not even, maybe once a night, depending on how long your night is but it does hold focus very well. And I'm very happy with that. I do let it sit outside a bit just to sort of come down to ambient temperature or up, whatever it is. 
but once it is, it holds very well. So that I'm very happy with. Um, build quality is great. It's mostly fiberglass. I think um, there are, there's some metal on the back. This piece in particular is probably where a lot of the 8.6 pounds comes from. But that brings up another point. Um, with my Explore Scientific, it's very front heavy. And I assume because of that, most refractors were. You know, with all that glass in the front. But this one is actually, I would say, neutral to slightly back heavy. It's actually the opposite. So the first time I went to the balance that I had all the weight for the front, it's, uh, you know, sort of giving it room on the front, thinking it would be all that weight there. But in fact, it actually tipped more to the back. So that was interesting. And, and so it just goes to show everyone's a little bit different in their design. But either way, it's a fairly easy scope to uh, balance and that's why I like having my ASI Air for once right on top, not off to the side, like on my Explore Scientific, it keeps the weight right on top and much more balanced. But other than that, yeah, it's great. I really, I mean, wh what other good points can you talk about? I mean, it's just an amazing scope. But that sort of brings us into, is it worth it? That's a hard question to answer and there's no one that will give the same answer. I mean, I've noticed this with any, any a lot of my hobbies, uh, used to be in the watches, wine. When you start getting into the higher quality of anything, you start paying a lot more for it. That's just the way it works. When there's a step up in quality, you generally speaking will have to pay a lot more. Uh, so is that worth it? That's a, that's something that everyone has to decide for themselves. Uh, do I see the quality difference? Yes, I would say absolutely. Is it night and day? No. But what I, would say, what I will say is between this and other sculpts, and it's not like I've shot the same target with them. I mean, I, unfortunately, we haven't had enough clear skies, to be honest, to be able to do that. If I have that much time, I'm going to be shooting different targets. But what I can say is that every single image I've done with this scope, it's just very sharp. It's crisp. It's sharp. You get details that you're much easier pulled out than with other telescopes. And that no doubt has to do a lot with the glass. You know, you're doing a lot less like sharpening and, and the texture tab and all that in Photoshop or whatever program you're using. And that's just because with this scope, you're not, you're just getting that. It just is a very clear, crisp uh, telescope with a good camera like this on the back. Now, again, there's a lot of different factors that go into astrophotography. You can tell you guys have been doing this longer. That's way better processing. Give them a much lower, a lower end scope. And, you know, shoot the same target for the same amount of time and his is going to look better. That's just the way it is. So, in other words, buying this isn't going to, all of a sudden, you're going to win an A-pod and all your pictures will be the best in the world. It just doesn't work that way. It's still, you need to work on all the other aspects of astrophotography and whatever your weakest link is, that's what's going to bring your pictures down. But, you know, when you buy something like this, it's definitely not your equipment. Uh, you know, the sky quality that has a big factor in the way your mount works and there's so many things right what kind of filter you're using according to your conditions but you know that when you have a telescope like this you're eliminating for sure the telescope this is you know one of the best out there there's there's other astrophysics and other companies but takahashi there's no doubt that i've seen firsthand they make some of the best optics out there and it just goes to show i show some pictures here you know None of these are APOS, none of them are, they're not even that amazing, but they're all, you notice, they're all very crisp, very just, you see the details nicely, and I know that has a lot to do with the telescope. I have to fight harder with my other telescopes to get those kind of details. So, you know, and I definitely never get any, like, aberrations or weird star colors or anything like that. Like, everything is, is just how it should be with this. It's all very adjusted, right? The, the, the lens... You know, the color correction is perfect. That quadruplet is doing its job. So it just works well. And I have to say, it's not a hard telescope to use. Um, I thought maybe it'd be more complicated. It, it's not, Honestly, it's just like anything else. If you get the, the back focus right, um, there's a number there, or what it should be. I can't remember offhand. There's really not that much to it. Like, it just works. You put it together. You may have to figure out the best way to do that, to attach your camera. And maybe that's something I'm going to play around with in the next few months. But... I have no issues from the very first time I used it. I didn't have to take it apart again or anything. It just worked. So that's nice. That's what you want, you know. Um, it's just the, the cost is, is like I said, you, when you start getting the higher end things, no matter what you're talking about, you start paying. It's the, the ratio of how much better it is for the price you pay 
it starts to get, you know, it's not even or what you might expect. That's just the way things are. And I understand that. So if you're going to go and uh, empty your savings and your investments to buy this, I would say don't. You know, you can do great quality images with any telescope that's reasonable in quality. But if you have the funds and you're really into astrophotography, you know, maybe you've had a scope or two before, there's no reason not to. I mean, they're, they're one of the, as I mentioned, one of the best out there. So what else can I say? The, 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 the is it worth it? That's an individual answer and decision. But for me, yes, it was worth it. I'm not going to buy four of them. I'm not going to buy their mount. Maybe they are amazing. I have no idea. But, um, you know, I don't even buy their accessories, but just having the scope itself, I'm, I'm happy with it. And as I mentioned, I will be adding the automatic focuser and we'll see down the road other things. But for now, really happy. I just want to get out there more and use it some more and show you guys some of the images. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where it's not going to, you're not going to outgrow it. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's the perfect focal length for so many things out in that summer sky. And... You know, there's never going to be a telescope that comes out that just blows this away. It's it's always going to be high, top-notch quality. So it's nice to know that you buy something like this, you take care of it, you can own it forever, and it's always going to pre uh, deliver great results. And that's what I wanted. Uh, my goal was to buy a Takahashi. I got one. I'm happy. Uh, you know, we'll see, but I really don't think I'm ever going to sell this. This is, uh, this is definitely my favorite telescope, and I use it any chance that I get. But when I need something bigger... I use my Explore Scientific and I'm happy with it. It's great. When I need something a lot smaller, I'll use a smaller telescope or, or camera lens. You know, it's all about using the right scope for the right target. And this one is great because it fits so many different targets. And so, like I said, anytime I can use it, I do. But I love all my scopes. Um, but this one's definitely my pride and joy. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any questions, leave me leave a comment. Or maybe your experience using one. Maybe it's your first time hearing about Takahashi. Um, do some research though. Find out where they sell it. Uh, there's probably going to be a wait time. All that stuff. But in the end, it'll be worth it once you get it and, and get out there and use it. Anyway, guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. I hope to get out there and provide more content for you. But I got more equipment reviews coming. But in the meantime, I'll see you on the next one.